Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an introduction to Risk Adjusted Return on Capital. For FRM candidates, this is from the assigned reading by Mikkel Crowey. And from now on, instead of calling it Risk Adjusted Return on Capital, I'm going to refer to it by its more affectionate shorthand name, which is Rayrock. And you can see here, Rayrock is a just a ratio. Specifically, it's a type of Risk Adjusted Performance Measure, or RAMPM, and it's the risk adjusted return divided by the economic capital. So first, let's look at the denominator. And here, I've diagrammed just a hypothetical distribution for a credit portfolio. As a credit portfolio, you'll recognize that it's not, it's asymmetric. It's got skew. And we can talk about the credit portfolio and some point here being the expected loss. All credit portfolios have some expectation of loss, but that's typically covered by loan loss provisions. And then if we go over to the right more, we can identify some point called the credit value at risk based on some level of confidence. The confidence here is important because there are an infinite number of selections here. We can increase our confidence and then the line moves to the right. So there are any number of credit VARs here, and the difference between here, the credit VAR and the expected loss, this area here is the unexpected loss. It could be one standard deviation. It could be several multiples of one standard deviation for higher levels of confidence. And this area here, this unexpected loss, is covered by economic capital. So we can say economic capital is some function of our confidence, and in it's the difference between the VAR or the credit VAR and the expected loss. And it is analogous to regulatory capital, as in the regulatory capital in Basel II. However, unlike regulatory capital, which is externally mandated, economic capital is the bank's internal measure from the perspective of its shareholders. So now let's look at uh, the specific formula for Ray Rock. And to make this easier for my FRM candidate customers, I'm going to use the exact same example found in Chapter 14 in the assigned reading by my Mikkel Crowey. And here's our general formula for Ray Rock. This is in yellow. Revenue minus expenses plus return on capital minus expected loss divided by economic capital. And the general idea here is first of all, it's just a performance ratio. As a performance ratio, the first principle is we want to have consistency between the numerator and the denominator. What we mean is here, the denominator is economic capital. This is really a form of return on capital. So here's the capital base. We want the numerator to reflect the profits that are earned specifically on this economic capital or that are supported by this economic capital. And we want to be consistent about that. And so, for example, one of the things we do here is we subtract the expected loss. That's because if we think about this distribution, economic capital covers unexpected losses, but not expected losses. And so those get backed out. On the other hand, return on capital, that is any return earned by investing the economic capital that is set aside to support this credit portfolio. If this economic capital earns profits, those to be consistent should be included in the numerator. And then what we're left with here is simply the net profit on the credit loan portfolio or loan facilities that are in fact supported by the economic capital. And so now just to show you the specific example, loan portfolio here, these are in millions, so the loan portfolio is one billion. And it earns, we expect a return of 9%. That means the loan revenue is 9% on a billion on an expected basis of 90 million. So that's our revenue right here. And then we have the economic capital set aside to support the loan. And this is just an input assumption here at 7.5%. You'll notice that it's a little bit lower than the 8% cook ratio found in Basel II. 
And so in this case, that means that we need to have 7.5% of the credit sensitive loan portfolio set aside in equity to support the line, the loan. That's the equity cushion. That implies 75 million, which is seven and a half percent of a billion. And we're going to invest that in government securities in the meantime. And per Crowey's assumption, Crowey's assumption, we're going to assume those government securities earn six and a half percent. So six and a half percent on the 70 million is almost 4.9 million. And that is right here. That's the return on our economic capital. And now for deposits, our credit sensitive asset, uh, our credit, our credit portfolio is 1 billion. We're going to fund that with 1 billion in demand deposits. So on the bank's balance sheet, these are liabilities. They fund those deposits, fund the loans that are assets. And so we, we have it on the exact same amount, a billion, and the interest on those deposits, let's say, is 6%. That's an interest expense to the bank of 60 million. 6% on 1 billion, 60 million. That's the expenses on the loan. And you'll notice, by the way, that here's our kind of our gross spread. We're earning 9% on loan assets that are costing us 6% on demand deposit liabilities. So the 60 million here is our expenses. Here's our expected loss on the loan portfolio. We'll assume 1%. 1% of a billion is 10 million. That's this expected loss right here. And finally, the operating cost. This also goes into the expense. And this is going to be any overhead cost that need to be allocated to support the loan. If we have overhead costs that are not allocated, we could distort this number. So that's another 15 million that goes into expenses. And so now we can look at the Ray Rock calculation. First, the numerator. If I just start from scratch, I've got here the loan revenue, and then I'm going to subtract the expenses, which are the, let me look right here, the interest expense and the operating cost. And then I'm going to add the return on economic capital. And I'm going to back out the expected loss right here. And that gets me 9.88 uh, million, almost 10 million in the numerator. My Ray Rock denominator is that economic capital that I set aside, which is 7.5% of the 1 billion or 75 million. My ratio is simply the numerator of the denominator or just about 13.2 percent. That's by Ray Rock. And briefly, I'll make note of something that's come up on the forum and the customer forum several times. Notice that under these assumptions, we have a balanced implied balance sheet, which is to say, here's the asset side, here's the liability and the equity side or left hand side and right hand side. On the left hand side, we've got the loan of a billion right here, funded by deposits of 1 billion on the right hand side those are liabilities so those match we supported this loan with 75 million in shareholder equity that's right here and then that is invested in government securities on the left hand or asset side of 75 million so we have 1.075 in assets on the left hand side of the balance sheet which match the 1.075 billion in liabilities plus equity on the right hand side of the balance sheet. Just a quick note there, it's come up on the forum quite a bit. So I hope that helps introduce the Ray Rock calculation. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.